my work as a medical professional has really shaped my ideas around how child welfare professionals can partner with the medical community in promoting positive outcomes for children and young people who have experiences in the child welfare setting and adoption. So as a pediatrician and an adolescent medicine specialist in the last two decades, I have had a really remarkable opportunity to work with young people across many different backgrounds and in a variety of settings. And one of the things that you get to see is how, how much families matter and how much supportive attachments really matter. Loving families and safe and stable homes can make remarkable differences in the life experiences and the life trajectories of young people. And when healthcare professionals can partner with child welfare professionals to promote permanency, to promote stability, it can make a world of difference. So there are three things that we feel medical professionals truly can do. First is to identify trauma. Two is to guide, advice, assist to be able to empower and support families to understand trauma and to view these in the context of the experiences that their children have had and to teach parents strategies to respond, to positively parent and to allow their child to, to build on the repertoire of responses. Lastly, is to refer, to refer to interventions, to refer to services, to refer to programs based on the medical, educational, developmental needs and, and, and concerns that they might have identified during their visits with families. The truth is, for the majority of healthcare professionals, there is nothing in medical education. There is nothing in medicine, there is nothing in postgraduate medical education that ensures that we have these exposures, that ensures that we have these knowledge to allow us to truly support children, youth, and families in adoptive settings. Which is truly why I feel that one strategy to get this information out is, is to get this information in continuing medical education programs where we can reach healthcare professionals for whom this might otherwise be foreign. The landscape has changed tremendously in the last decade. We now have adverse childhood experiences at the forefront of pediatric medicine. These are difficult experiences that children and youth may have encountered that we know affects your neurobiology, that, that activates your fight or flight response, and that truly affects physical, social, and emotional health lifelong. You can't turn a corner in pediatrics without hitting adverse childhood experiences. And we now have primary care practices that are incorporating screening for adverse childhood experiences in their intake processes. We have children's hospitals across the country that are taking leadership in this area. ACES is truly, I feel, a, a watershed moment in our shared history as medical professionals and child welfare professionals because now we have a shared understanding and we have a shared language. They may not understand adoption, they may not understand child welfare, but they understand adverse childhood experiences. You know when you talk about competencies, there is what you call the domains, right? And we typically divide them into the cognitive, the behavioral, and the affective, also known as knowledge, skills, and attitudes. What are some of the attitudes that we want medical professionals to have, to possess as they, as they approach this work? You have to be committed to delivering comprehensive care, quality care, culturally competent care, to communicating, communicating to make sure that you're coordinating, to make sure that the child's medical, developmental, educational needs are met. And it, that has to stem from an underlying belief, from an attitude that buys into it, from, a, from an attitude that, that, that appreciates it. We also need clinicians to, to believe that they can moderate the impact of trauma, that provided the appropriate tools, provided the appropriate internal and external supports, we can help children, youth, and families to be successful. Now let's talk about knowledge. We need medical professionals who understand the psychosocial concerns of adopted children and young people to recognize the feelings of separation, feelings of loss that they may experience even at various times in their lifetime, even if adoption was a positive experience for them. We need healthcare providers that understand some of the concerns and considerations on the part of the families. There are processes that they go through, there's adjustment that happens, 
And it can be difficult sometimes. Now, it's also critically important for our healthcare providers to get to know systems, to have some working knowledge of the child welfare system, potentially helpful resources, programs, services in the community, because these are the kinds of external supports that our children and families just might be able to benefit from for them to be able to succeed in building these relationships and building permanency. Skills. We need providers who really have great communication skills. If I think of what's the defining skill set of somebody who can successfully work with children, youth, and families in adoption settings or who have adoption histories, it's really communication skills. It's about empathetic communication, how you can put yourself in the place of a child, how you put yourself in the place of a parent, while at the same time being mindful of, of what are the resources and supports within the system that you might be able to mobilize and bring to bear to promote success in this particular relationship and setting. When I think of what medical professionals can do, easily to become more adoption competent, I can think of two things. One, thinking about how we ask about adoption. Thinking about how we identify children, youth, and families in our practices, in our clinics, for whom adoption was a part of their family story, for whom adoption was part of their life story. The other thing that medical professionals can do to make their practices adoption competent and that they can do so very easily is to be sensitive about respectful adoption language and behavior. If we are to encourage our healthcare providers to speak about adoption, they have to be able to do so with sensitivity. They have to be able to do so in ways that are reflective and mindful of how they communicate and to make sure that they're not communicating adoption in a negative or in, in a pejorative light. One thing that child welfare systems and professionals can do to effectively engage medical systems and medical providers is to take a look at state-level organizations, to take a look at the American Academy of Pediatrics chapter in your state. The American Academy of Pediatrics is the largest professional organization representing pediatricians who truly have an interest in child, family, and health and well-being. Our uh, program partners in New Jersey, for example, have had tremendous success just reaching out to their state AAP chapter in developing partnerships. One other step that child welfare systems and professionals can do is to take a look at what's happening in their communities around adverse childhood experiences. And what you will find is that ACEs have truly hit the radar of the medical professions. These medical professionals that are participating in ACE initiatives are natural partners because we speak the, lame, the same language and we have a shared understanding. Reach out, learn more about what's happening around uh, adverse childhood experiences in your community and tap into the medical professionals that are there. Lastly, it's really important as well for child welfare professionals to be able to initiate conversations about these with, with medical professionals, and if not with medical professionals, with the families they work with. What can adoptive parents do to help their medical professionals become more adoption competent? Raise the issue. Raise the issue. Initiate the conversation. Ask about ACE screening. Initiate the issue. I have a story along these lines. You know, not that long ago, I met this 15-year-old young man, and he came to me through his court-appointed special advocate. His court-appointed special advocate found me through our local ACES consortium, and he sent out an email message saying, I am looking for an ACE-informed, trauma-informed pediatrician. I have a 15-year-old young man who, according to his caseworker, has had the most severe stories of abuse and neglect she had ever encountered in her career. This CASA initiated the conversation, and it's a conversation that parents, we want parents to be empowered, we want parents to raise these conversations. Along these lines, we've developed this tool called What Pediatric Providers Need to Know About Adoption. And the purpose of the tool is just that. We want to get this tool in the hands of parents. We want this tool to be helpful in initiating conversations about trauma, about healing, support, stability, and resilience.